Well, it might sound as if Deborah and I are on the same page yeah. because we probably are the, uh, on the effect of the um, funding cut that is maybe going to happen or maybe not going to happen and the effect on the city and public arts. So my involvement today is as an independent member of the Christchurch City Council's public art advisory body and obviously as governing patron of SCAPE Public Art and I've been in that position or involved with SCAPE for the past 17 years. By way of background, in 2007, SCAPE Public Art, then Art and Industry, made a submission to the City Council to seek a fund for public art. This was presented by myself and Deborah McCormick at the time of the presentation, it was noted that the lack of such a fund seemed an omission in a modern city such as Christchurch, given many other New Zealand cities had already committed to such funding. Our submission in 2007 was successful and the Council established PAG, resulting in an annual fund for public art on the, on the basis that at least a one-to-one -one ratio of matched funding was required to draw down on it. This scheme has been hugely successful with a great number of important works commissioned and delivered such as those uh, such as those works pictured in your handouts. So it's quite a big handout that you've got but interesting. Uh, Flower Power by Regan Gentry um, which is by the Old Bank of New Zealand. Passing Time down by the CPIT and tree houses for swamp dwellers, which is just in the escape hub on Gloucester Street there. My late husband and I became the first matched donors under this scheme, financially contributing to Flower Power at Stewart Plaza. And I think it's still called Stewart Plaza, but not really referred to, but at the time it was pretty current. The work has proven to be as resilient uh, as the people of Christchurch and I'm quite proud to see it lit up um, again and working after the earthquake. I might add that all the sculptures that are around the city as a result of the work done in public art didn't fall down, so I think that's quite a, uh, a nod to the testament and skill of the workmanship and the people involved. So I want to speak to the PAG long-term plan submission on behalf of myself and Anthony Wright, director of the museum, he would normally do this as the spokesperson, but he's obviously away and in Venice, and so I've got the job. We are the two independent, that is non-council members, of the council's PAG group. Other members include Jenny Harper, Lara Strongman, Hugh Nicholson, and Councillor Paul Lonsdale. Well, he can't be involved because you're inside the tent at that point, but you're listening. <laughs> Our submission is against the proposed decision to make a significant cut to the Public Art Fund, which was $296,000 in 2014-15, with a now proposed drop of $71,000 to provide $225,000 for the 2015-16 year. We are not seeking an increase on the past sum allocated, but strongly recommend that this proposal be reversed and that the 2014 figure be reinstated into the 2015-16 budget. We have in our submission outlined our reasons against this proposal and I would like to briefly reiterate and speak to these points. The City Council's Public Art Fund was set up to be administered by the Council's Public Art Advisory Group with a major objective of leveraging at least $1 of other contributed money for each $1 of public art fund committed to major public artworks. In other words, its mandate and success has been around in a public philanthropic drive for public art. This modus operandi is absolutely and clearly in line with current practice nationally and internationally in the arts. We are all well aware of the critical importance to the city of a healthy and vibrant arts community and the establishment of PAG by the Council was an indication of its commitment to this. The Council's expectation of a dollar for dollar has been a target that has been exceeded by PAG, essentially through the management and delivery of works through SCAPE. 
Over the past three years, each dollar of the Council's funding has been matched by an additional $3.25 of other funding. While Anthony Wright and I are the independent and voluntary faces on this group, I hasten to add that to achieve this current $1 to $3.25 match requires a considerable amount of volunteer community, individual and business fundraising input. To retain the status quo funding of 296000 is not only vital for the purposes of funding the City's public art program, but is vital as a mark of the Council's commitment to the community who generously contribute to the program, increasing the City's financial investment in the public art program threefold. As a result of this public-private partnership and investment, the City has now been provided with considerable capital assets into the now notable public art collection, a collection that now attracts local visitors and tourists to the central city. So let's consider the figures which are the crux of the submission. The proposed LTP over the next five years will provide 1,237,000 for the public art fund, which on the current track record of just over a threefold increase would be matched by an additional $4,020,000. However, if the present funding is restored, over the next five years, council funding of 1,480,000, that is the 2014 figure of 296,000 times five, with no inflation forecasts available for out years added in, would be matched on the current track record by an additional 4,813,000 of external grants, industry partnerships, philanthropic funding, etc. Thus, if the Council lowers its contribution to PEG through the LTP, this is a potential loss of almost $800,000 in revenue for the City's public art program. In business investments, the loss of this revenue would not make economic sense. Equally, in my opinion, the reduction of the Council's base funding to PAG may reduce the potential for positive public-private interaction and investment in public art. In summary, and as I have noted before, the Council's investment through the LTP provides the base for a threefold community contribution and resultant valuable capital asset program for the city through its public art program. So I urge you to continue to build on the good community will and investment that this program has developed and not destabilise or decrease it through this proposed LTP reduction in the base funding. It is a hugely successful council initiative, which is now a well-established council, public and private partnership that the city can be proud of. End of story. My number, I hope it was of interest My arithmetic you. isn't working for me, so help me, Dame Adrian. The proposed LTP reduction of 71185 would result in the potential loss of an additional... 792,756. They're not the same number, are they? One's referring to one year's cut and the other one's referring to five years' loss. So it's, yes, where, yes. it's a multiplier of five on the 71 yes. leads us to a uh, loss of 792. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Okay, any other questions? Yanni? Yeah, um, thank you for what you're doing, it's fantastic. Um, um, I just, I guess one of the concerns I've had for a number of years has been, there's been some really great stuff happening in the central city, but we've heard through this process repeatedly from people in the eastern suburbs the really feeling of neglect, decline, the need for, um, you know, a bit more um, uh, enhancement, beautification, uh, celebration of the areas. H have you considered looking at those other um, places you know, particularly that got hit by the earthquake around what you can do in terms of public art? I think we've had this discussion before and, and we've obviously um, had approaches by the different areas in the city and I think at the time it was um, thought that the community groups themselves, the councils of the, of the various areas should handle that. 
there's not endless money and there's not endless people in, in people who deliver public art. So it's a very small type and I think we've done extremely well to have gotten this portfolio of, um, that you've all got in front of you. I mean, these are major, major works and we just can't do everything. So I would think our concentration, I sympathise with the other areas, I do, particularly since the earthquake, but, but we can't do everything. And I think if we're concentrated on a, on a major public art fund and uh, development in the city, it, it, it speaks hugely to what they're trying to do in the city, which is basically to attract visitors. So it's a bit isolation, uh, isolated to be speaking about the others at this particular point, I think, but I do appreciate what you're saying. Thank you. That's a good explanation. I appreciate that. Um, look, thank you very much. And, um, uh, yeah, so we're, obviously there are things for us to consider very carefully. Well, I, it would be great if we could see a huge turnout. I'm yeah. speaking with escape hat on, but a city hat as well because it's going to be owned by the city is the fanfare. And we've done it, and huge support from a lot of funders, but particularly the city council, and we look forward to seeing you all there to celebrate something else new that's going to attract visitors. Thank you. Yeah, we do, we do have a day. 10th of June. 10th of June. OK. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. Um, Charles Drace.